All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what we want to do is to incorporate those um, constraints. And we're going to take a trick. We're going to do a trick to be able to appreciate this better. So watch here. We must modify the program so that whenever X, I is positive, is producible, whenever we are producing shed short pant, then Y, I has been incurred. A machinery cost has been incurred. A rental machinery cost must have been incurred. That's what this means. So we are ensuring that the relationship between X and Y is enforced. Okay. Now, the value of Y can be determined from the value of X. We said it before. That any time we want to find Y, we want to incur the cost, we must have already known that we are going to produce the X. So you only care why if X is being produced. We know that. So we're going to use a very powerful trick to ensure that whenever X is positive, Y is 1. Because Y is either 0 or 1. That we know. Now, we are going to, and we always have to do this, we are going to let M1, M2, M3 be very big numbers. I'm going to show you the principle that is planted here. M1, M2, M3. We want them to be very big and numbers. We are going to use a certain linking constraint. Okay. We are going to create a certain linking constraint. And this linking constraint is a very important thing. For your attention. Okay. Okay. So this is it. And the linking constraint, and it goes with all of them. The linking constraint always will say that Is always less or equal to m1 y1. x2 is always less or equal to m2 y2. Anytime you are dealing with this, this is how it goes. m3 x3 is less than or equal to m3 y3. Now, this is a linking constraint and it helps you. But of course, me giving you a linking constraint is one thing. But me making sense of the linking constraint is another. Here's the thing. The MI will ensure that any time X, any time XI is positive, then YI is 1. That will ensure that. You can take a typical example and you will see this thing. Okay. Anytime. So watch it. So we need a certain value. This is the whole point. We need a certain value for M1. We need a value. In such a way that any time x1 is positive, any time we are producing this excess, then the y is 1. Now, then we need to get a value. Now, let's assume that y is 1. y is 1. y is 1 here. We are left with what? We are left with m1. Okay. We are left with m1. And we'll be left with this value of m1 any time the y1 is 1. So what should be the value of this m1? Well, if x1 is 0. Sorry, it's greater than 0. If x1 is greater than 0, okay, if you have this value x1 greater than 0, then y1 can't be 0. Because if y1 is 0, it will mean that x1 is less than 1 or equal to 1. You all agree with that. It's already established. So it means that if any sets are produced, by the way, when we say any sets are produced, that's what we mean by x1 is greater than 0. It's not a matter of greater or equal to. It's seriously greater than zero. So anytime X is produced, the objective function will in include the cost of the machinery for that X. It's simple. That's the point. Now, listen. If Y1 is 1, if Y1 is 1, that is, you have incurred a cost, then X1 must be less than or equal to the M1. So this X1 must be, this condition must hold. This whole condition must hold. If any time Y1 is for because if, and, and of course, if this one is holding, it means that the whole of this towns will now tend to X1 less or equal to M1. We all agree with that. That is if Y1 is 1. That's it, if Y1 is 1. And this does not unnecessarily, this does not restrict the value of X1. Okay, if this is holding, okay, it doesn't unnecessarily restrict the value of x1. 
It doesn't. But if a large value is not chosen for M1, we need a large value for M1. Okay. So let's say that we choose a value of M1 to be what, 10. Let's assume we choose a value of M1 to be 10. Then X1, watch it, X1 less or equal to M1, Y1. Then what is going to be of this value? Okay. Then this value will unnecessarily restrict the value of X1. So we, we need to choose a value of M1 in such a way that that value will not nullify, sorry, you need to choose a value of M1 so that that value will not nullify the X1 that is if Y1 is 0. So if, one, if Y1 is 1. So if Y1 is 1, then M1 will be, and we choose a value of M1 to be say 10, then it's going to be 10 times 1. Okay, and that 10 times 1 is 1, is 10. And if 10 times 1 is 10, it means that x1 must be equal to what? 10. That is the highest value x1 can have. Isn't it? So, so in that case, the highest value x1 can have is supposed to be what? 10. Okay, so in that case, we are producing only a maximum of 10. So x1 becomes the highest value, sorry, m1 becomes the highest value of x1. I want to repeat that value of x1 so in general any of the mi should be set to the maximum value that x1 xi can get so if i suppose i choose the value of m1 if, if i choose a value of m1 to be um, 50 okay, then i'm saying that the highest value x1 can take is what is that 50 okay Say that x1 can take a value of that 50 because y1 is already 1. And why should we set that to the maximum value of that? Okay. The reason why you got to set is that because you want to produce enough of the x's to be able to get a lot of revenue okay. in order to generate a lot of revenue. Now, in this very question, what will be the value of the Let me tell you the value of the X1 and how we calculate it. Okay. For the, for, sorry, what do we the value of the M1 here? So we're going to calculate the value of the M1. There's a trick, a beautiful trick for doing that. So remember, we are going to assume a certain value of this M1. But you don't just get up and assume. In order to get the value of M1, we have to make these assumptions. Let's remind ourselves of the constraint. You use the constraint. Because remember, we are bringing all of this into the constraint. So let's rewrite the constraint. 3x1, 2x2, 6s3. I'm going to take these ones back here. Okay. So you're going to be 3x1 plus 2x2 plus 6x3. You're using the constraint. Okay. Less than or equal to, but in all of this, I'm going to make it equal to. Okay. Less than or equal to, what was the value? 160, right? Or 150. Let me check. Okay. 150. 150. So I'm going to use this one. Okay. 3x1 plus 2x2 plus 6x3 equal to 150. That was the first one. Okay. Let's go to the second. The second one is 4x1, 3x2, 4x3. Okay. And that was equal to 160. I'm using equal to for that reason because you're going to create something. So it's 4x1, okay, 3x2, 3x2, plus 3x2, plus 4x3. These are the only constraints we have. So in order to get the value of m1, this is what you do. Now remember, if we are going to get a value for M1, then we got to assume that X2 and X3 are zero because our focus is this. Okay, we are trying to get X1 less or equal to M1, Y1. We are trying to find this value, M1. So our focus is on the X1. We want the maximum value X1 can take. 
In order to get a maximum x1 can take, we've got to hold the other ones constant. So we've got to assume that x2 and then the x3 are zero. This is how you always do it. X2 and x3 are zero. So if x2 and x3 are zero, what to be x1 in these whole functions? That's all. Okay, so let's start the equation one, this first one. If x2 is zero here, okay, x2 is zero and x3 is 0, what to be the value of x1? Well, then you will have 3x1 equal to 150, which means that x1 is equal to what? 150 divided by 3, and that will be 50. That's for the first one. Okay. For the second one, if x2 and x3 are 0, if x2 and x3 are 0, what would be the value of x1? Well, that would be 4x1 equal to 160. And that means that x1 is equal to 40. So we have two values where x1 is what? 50 and another one x1 is 40. You always take the smaller value. You always take the smaller value, which will become the maximum value of the x1. You always select the smaller value. So we can say that that smaller value is what? 40. And so on the basis of that, we can say that M1 is now what? 40. Because remember, that M1 is what we are looking for. And that M1 is the highest value X1 can take. And the highest value X1 can take is the smaller value of the X1s that you found from all of the constraints. And so we can rewrite the first equation to be x1 less or equal to 40y1. Okay, we've gotten the value of x1. I'm oh, sorry, m1. How do we get that of the other one, which is the m2 and m3? Well, the same thing. If I'm going to get m2, okay, so now I'm, I'm starting everything. x2, I'm looking for m2 in this function. m2y2. I got to assume that x1 and then the x3 are what? Zero. So that I can find x2. So once again, this time I have to assume that this x1 there and then the x3, they are zero. So if they are zero, then in the first equation, you are going to get 2x2 equal to 150, which means that x2 is what? 75. That's for the first equation. And then the second equation, if x1 is 0, okay, and x3 is also 0, then we are going to have 3x2 equal to 160, which means that x2 is what? Um, is something 0.5. 160 divided by, what is the value? Now, all of a sudden, 160 divided by 3, that will be 53.33. Okay, so you put that down, 53.33. That's a value. Okay, and so it means that when we are to rewrite it like we did rewrite this, we are going to have that. The smaller value will be 53 instead of the 75. Okay, now let's go to the last one. The last one is what is the value of x3 okay what's the value of x3 if x1 and x2 are also zero well check at the top okay if these ones are zero that's how you do it and all of this you have to work it okay. if they are zero then it means that we have the first one to be 6x3 equal to 150 which means that x3 is what is 30 and the second one will be that we have 4x3, 4x3 equals to 160, which means that x3 is equal to, okay, let me be sure that the first one I was right, okay, the first one was 6x3, 6x3, so you take your calculator, Take your calculator, you get 150 divided by 6. That's 25. I knew that was a problem. So this is 25. 
This value here is not 30, it's 25, okay? So this is 25, okay? And then this one here will be 160 divided by four. 160 divided by four will give you 40. So the smaller value you take there is 25. And so we can say without a shadow of doubt that M1 for the first case is what? 40. M2 for the second case is 53.33. M3 for the third case is 25. That is a smaller one. Now that we have gotten our value, we rewrite our entire equation. Okay. We rewrite. Let me take you back to. And by the way, don't worry, all of these things are, are managed for you. You see all of this in the slide there. So when you look at the slide, everything I've explained there. So we choose a smaller value. Okay. So now when you substitute all of that, you get it. So we, we have to bring that linking constraint back into the equation because we have the smaller value. Thank you, Mark, for your 25 meters. So x1 is now less than or equal to 40y1. x2 is 53. Okay, it was 0.33, but we ignored it. Um, x3 is less than or equal to 25. And then finally, your normal integrality constraint and the binary constraint are now protein. This is a final answer. And I'm telling you, if you solve this in Excel, this is the solution you're going to get. If you calculate this in Excel, by the way, you can move this right hand side values into the left so that you get zeros on the right which is this and once you work this thing out nicely you are finally going to get this so the optimal solution if you solve it you're going to get y3 to be one and y3 to be one means y3 has been incurred the machinery cost for pants has been incurred which means that x3 the should be done and this will give you the optimal profit of 75 cents ladies and gentlemen therefore the Tana textile limited should produce 25 pounds every week and that said profit to be made if we make any shirt at all no matter how many we make okay we must pay that cost of 200 dollars to Brings us to the end of the entire Kabuto when it comes to the fixed chart. So fixed chart, the most important thing here is that you must always note that there is a fixed cost inside the objective function, and that fixed cost also has to be incorporated into the constraint. So if you have fixed cost where you have x1, x variables, and y variables, make sure that all of them are also inside the constraints. They are all embedded inside a constraint. And the way to embed them is to use that formula, xi less or equal to miyi. That formula will always be used to be able to generate the value of the m. And that value of the m is when you are considering in the constraint. It doesn't matter how many constraints. If there are 13 constraints, put the value of that. Assume that the x1 is 0 and then x2 is 0 and calculate for the others in all cases and select the lowest one and do it for all the other constraints and find the lowest one and then that becomes the m1 in totality so that brings us to the end of the entire cover